Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video I want to make use of my Minmus ISRU system which hasn't even been tested yet and also potentially my Paul ISRU system which is just hanging out there and fulfill some contracts. The return to Kerbin from a flyby of Paul would be good. I don't know about the VAL satellite that may or may not happen and uh, science data from the surface of Lathe would be good and the leaf stone so those are the ones I'm targeting and we are closest to a jewel transfer window so I'm just got a time warp to that we're somewhat past the Duna transfer window and that's our major other option Ike contracts you've got a lot of Ike contracts we've got uh, some gilly stuff to do but Eve would have to be behind us so it's so ways away from that and so just time warping and for the first time in this series, I'm going to import a craft from a previous series. So obviously I've done stock stuff before. Uh, mostly I've been building new stuff, but I don't anticipate... Well, I'll discuss exactly what kind of changes to this design I would contemplate, but I think we'll just test it as is first. So on to the SPH. This is the Spirit of Jin R. R for rescue from my 1.8.1 stock efforts. Uh, those were live streamed and I don't remember if I produced the video that this appeared in for YouTube. I might have stopped that series before we got to this but the goal of this was to rescue a Kerbal from the surface of Lathe and that is obviously a unique sort of thing to do uh, and to do that we not only had this plane, but we also had it equipped with a rover. You can see there's a rover there. And the rover was lowered via this, uh, there's two hinges. And we have to be very careful about how we do this if we do it this, uh, if we use this. Outside, it uh, tends to be fairly free swinging once we unlock the hinges. But you get the idea. Uh, it lowers the rover. We have to use both hinges. Yes, I could use the controller, but I never really figured out how to use that silly controller. So, yep, eventually it plops onto the ground and we use this to rescue the Kerbal on the surface of Lathe. And in this case, we will use it as a Lathe stone retrieval craft, hopefully. And I mean, if it turns out that the lathe stone might be far away. Otherwise, you know, on lathe, it's tough to get from place to place. Because the Kerbals can't use their EVA packs to speed up the process. Now, this was obviously tested in the previous series, but does it work in 1.11? I don't know. Presumably, the parts work the same. Now, in that stock career in 1.8.1, I hadn't unlocked the rapiers, the ramjets, or the nuclear engines. That's why we have two cheetahs and two panthers. And on the one hand, I think it might be good to replace them. On the other hand, that does change the balance somewhat, right? Uh, the two cheetahs are one ton apiece, and the two panthers 1.2 tons. So that's a total of 4.4 tons in the back here. If we put uh, two ramjets, that increases the mass back here by 1.2 tons. If we replace everything by rapiers, uh, we have those here. That's a total of 8 tons, which means an additional 3.6 tons just in the tail. And of course, I already balanced it properly for aerodynamics. Uh, this is how it looks here. And I get the feeling that putting more power in the back might be dangerous. <laughs> um, I'm tempted to do the whiplash option. It's not as severe as the rapier, but it's probably a net benefit. Probably? I don't know. They're not that much more expensive than the panthers either. They're just heavier. And we're gonna be carrying the extra mass the whole time. Uh, I don't know if that's the best thing. The wingtip SRBs were just to pass, uh, help us pass the speed of sound because that's really sticky in stock. And we'll, we'll just drop those off. I think I'll just leave it for now. And we'll see how it does. So we have a docking port there, just a small one. 
and we will be relying on ISRU to refill this so that it can continue on its way. There is a probe core in the bay uh, to control this uncrewed. However, I think we'll we'll risk flong. <laughs> we'll risk flong right off. And if flong gets flung, sorry. Um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll just use the parachute. Okay. I haven't done a whole lot of plane things in 1.11, so this is going to be interesting. Let's just go for it and find out. I, I'm in an adventurous mood. Uh, parts which are not available. Okay. Uh, external command chairs. Yeah, so, I mean, other designs could involve the nerve or the ramjets or stuff, but really that should be designed around those engines rather than just trying to replace these with them. So, if possible, we'll get this to... I mean, I think I gave it enough fuel to get to Minmus direct, so we wouldn't have to transfer the fuel. But the docking port's a little bit shallow, in other words, I don't know if it can cleanly dock to the station or anything. Oh gosh, it's bouncy. I guess that's a good sign. <laughs> um, it could get to Minmus straight if I fly it right, but I don't remember how to fly it right. So there's that's a thing. And it's been a while. And then we, if we top off at Minmus, we could go to Jewel, capture on Jewel, go to Lathe, land on Lathe get the Leif stone, and then... But before we go to Leif, maybe we should top off at Paul first. And I don't remember whether that thing has a small docking port or not, so we might want to launch something else to help stuff out before we actually transfer to Jewel. And we probably should have done the Minmus uh, transfer earlier because we are right at the Jewel transfer window, and we got to take a few days to get to Minmus anyway. It's all complicated, probably, I mean, I've, I've, I'm obviously making this more complicated than it needs to be, but let's go, let's just go. Alright, throttle up, engines. Okay, we're off, that part works. I forget the ideal sort of situation, it could be that we're supposed to skim lower could be that we're supposed to get higher first. My natural airplane instincts are to go higher into thinner air because planes like that, but oh, maybe we'll gain some speed first. This has no RCS. That's another quirk. Whatever we're going to dock to, we'll have to dock with it. I'm pretty sure this is not going optimally. <laughs> I think I'm just going to use the little boosters now. Can we get past the speed of sound convincingly? Uh, I'm not too convinced by that. Okay, those are off. We're actually losing speed. Okay, I'm I'm impatient. I'm pretty sure 400 meters per second will do. Or not. Nope. They they can't do it. We will have to review this situation. Don't tell me I'm going to have to watch my own video to figure this one out. Okay, jets are down. We'll, we might barely make low curve in orbit here. If we're lucky. I think we're facing too much drag. Yep, Flong's coming right back down again. Well, we're going to have to use what little lift this has and sort of turn to the right there. We've got some delta V remaining. I think we'll assume that that's going to be using the jets. 
Launching it as a space shuttle may be advisable, but <laughs> uh, that would probably negate the need for the refueling at Minmus or from Minmus. Minmus could send a pod. We'll need to develop a Minmus to Kerbin pod to transfer fuel anyway. We are equipped with a drogue chute and of course the brakes, mainly because I didn't know what the condition of the terrain at Leith would be when we got there, so it was made with that in mind. I think the terrain behind us looks better than the terrain in front of us overall, or right underneath us would be good. Now, brakes, parachute, slow down. I've got brakes on and the drogue chute. All right, well, at least we have not failed Flong. So, recover vessel. And maybe we should develop the refueler first, because it sure looks like this thing, even if I make improvements, is going to end up in Kerbin orbit, not going all the way to Minmus to pick up the fuel. So, I'll uh, get your comments on how I can fly this better. I'm sure people will have comments on that. They always do, and I always forget. But, um, yeah, we'll, we'll wait on that, and instead let's... Get the refueling vehicle that brings stuff from Minmus to Kerbin and get that over there and then we'll have the lander land and do the conversion. Hopefully that won't take too many days, otherwise we'll lose our jewel window. Okay, so our fuel transfer vehicle is fairly simple but with a few novel features. Uh, first of all, I wanted both docking ports, the small one and the regular size one. Uh, but I didn't want to put one on the opposite end because we've got the nerve down there. So I put them like this and hope that that's not going to be a problem. And um, otherwise we are using the nerve in order to push the fuel around. And so we have the liquid fuel tanks and then uh, these tanks are empty right now because they will grab the fuel from Minmus and bring it back. And by my calculations, um, a single load with the little ore miner should be able to mostly fill this up, uh, maybe not quite. And the fuel that we have here, the liquid fuel, should be enough to push the empty vessel over to Minmus, grab the fuel, and then bring it back to low carbon orbit. It has to uh, bring itself back down to low carbon orbit. We're not air braking. I thought about air braking, but we're, if we're gonna use the nerve, that's gonna be inconvenient, so. It's a toss-up. I mean, it might be more efficient to not use the nerve, use a li liquid fuel oxidizer engine, and then use a heat shield to air capture back down, but we'd have to do some testing. Uh, given the relatively low mass of the payload, I decided to try for a recoverable launcher again. Uh, the same, same sort of deal. I'm not trying to complicate things. I just want to bring the thing back. It's not the most sophisticated method ever. I never used the most sophisticated method to bring these things back, but it'd be nice to get them back. So uh, this time we're going with the vector engines on the bet that, well, if we can bring it back, they their cost is not that bad. If we can't bring it back, then the cost is a little bit of a problem. Thrust weight ratio off the ground is 1.44 and not that much better, you know, in vacuum, but 3,921 meters per second in vacuum. So, yep, we will see how this works. Okay, so we have obviously some empty space in the liquid fuel and oxidizer. That's expected. Throttle up, SAS on, and launch. Fairly brisk. I'm a little bit worried about our aerodynamics given the, given the huge fairing. Well, at least these engines have a lot of gimbling, so that saves some trouble. Would like a less stubby rocket, but stubby is good for landing anyway. So somebody had suggested doing clamshell fairings with a higher uh, force, so I upped the force to the numbers provided, and let's see. This is an awkward fairing, of course. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, okay, six 
shells might not have been what I was looking for, but all right, fine. Uh, well, that that can work too. <laughs> it's not quite confetti, but uh, I didn't realize that I had it on six. Oh shoot! I only put the rear on one side. Well, shucks, that's a mistake. And worse, it's on the side that's a little bit heavier because I've got the docking port and reaction wheel on that side too. At the bottom of this, we're using this core for the first time, that remote, remote guidance unit. Just to have a low profile. So we've got the batteries, we've got some antennae and a reaction wheel as well. Oh, we've lost communication. Why? No, we have all sorts of antennae. That shouldn't happen. Gosh darn it. Well, so much for recoverability. Uh, well, this guy got an unintended boost up. Oh, uh, see? Well, I have to be more attentive to our communication situation. I thought that we'd have some cra we'd be able to bounce off. We've got relay antennae and everything. I turned them on. I thought we could bounce the signal off of Minmus or something. But apparently not. I guess our uh, relay antennae are not that powerful. Well, so this is not coming back. So much for bringing the little vectors back. And we've got an extra piece of space junk that we need to deal with. That needs to be a priority after this. Well, uh, Minmus is where? Minmus is there. So we're sort of poking out in not the best place, but not the worst situation. Okay, we'll just wait until we get comms. You think I'd... Well, there we go, finally pick it up, jeez. Alright. Um, well, we don't really need the parachutes anymore. For now, I mean, if we try to figure out a way to recover it, I could imagine clawing the bomb of this and... Well, we could just push it. We could just push it down into a lower periapsis, and that would do the trick, I guess, maybe. Okay. Separation. Separation. No, oh, is that a stack separator? I thought, oh, I wanted, well, another piece of debris. I wanted a regular decoupler. Everything's going wrong today. Okay, well, that'll be a start. Maybe I should have locked fuel, you know, just in case, we could have had a little bit of locked fuel on the launcher. Just locked the fuel that needs to come back, and that would have saved it. And the nerve proceeds. Okay. Arriving. Okay, we'll have some semblance of an encounter there. Uh, it's a little bit far because the descending node is all the way out there. That's the real gap. Maybe I can just force the descending node in. It creates more inclination, but it gives us an encounter that's quicker. Go. No, we're gonna have to go there faster. Mimis is small. Okay, where is the docking port we want? I think I'll go with that one. Okay, we are docked. All right, so now for the drilling part, finally. I've delayed this long enough. In operating the lander though, we're going to have to make sure that we maintain comms. Uh, somebody had wondered whether I had put antennae on the body of this. I did, they're down here. So we did always have antenna there, but of course we also have the antennae on the fuel delivery system. And the lander needs to land where there's ore. And we had identified the ideal location, which I think is currently in the dark, so we don't want to do that right now. Let's wait for... Minmus rotates pretty fast, though, so... We'll wait until it gets into daylight. All right. We have a controller. We do not have an engineer, so it's not going to be full efficiency and everything. We have comms. And let's activate our engines. 
We've got a lot of stuff, but no ore. Not a huge amount of Delta V, you'll notice. So we do have to worry about that. Hmm. <laughs> I hope we don't have to worry about it too much. Let's find out. So, let's all get the gear down. We're really high up. We're basically going to be coming straight down, which is maybe not the worst thing. But we cannot light the engines in this direction. That would be bad. So let's uh, sidestep a bit. Okay, deorbiting. Okay, I think we're going too far. Well, Mimis had rotated in the meantime. Yeah. Okay. We are down. It's a flat, so that's good. Deploy drill. Get the oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Didn't put enough clearance for the drill. And we can only drill for as much as allows us to get back into orbit. Okay, it seems to be working. I guess we'll have the other drill too. Though net-net we're losing electric charge already. Or maybe not. Well, we're still recovering electric charge, all right. But it's dancing. <laughs> uh, okay, well, if I turn SAS off, it seems worse. Let, let me just keep SAS on. Uh, cannot warp faster. Okay, we, we're, I didn't mean for us to be flying. Oh, gosh. Now, let me, okay, now I got at zero. Okay, how long does it take to fill up on ore, and how much... Delta V will we lose? Well, it's gonna take more than one minute to stay, so I should start the fuel cell. Okay. But starting the fuel cell means we lose more Delta V because we're not replenishing that liquid fuel and oxidizer. I'm worried about my jewel window, right? We were trying to meet that window, too. I'll be conservative on this run and say that I want 350 meters per second. Okay, 351 meters per second. Now, rendezvousing is a little bit complicated because it's at a different inclination. We are where? We're here. And we have to go clockwise, we have to go westward. Um, we're not too far off, though. Okay, well... Here goes nothing. We're heavy, really heavy. That's sort of a mountain and a half right there, too. Quite a mesa. Because we have to go retrograde, that actually costs more Delta V. Oh, I have to watch out for mountains in this direction, huh? We'd better be able to make orbit here, otherwise we're in trouble. It's dodgy. Okay, well, we're in orbit. So, 87 meters per second left, 7 meters per second to boost it up like this, so I think we'll make it. Maybe we could have... Brought some more ore. But it's best to be safe on the first try, otherwise we'd lose this. Well, potentially. Okay, it looks like we'll have to take some time to phase. Super minor correction, and then we'll have a min uh, relative velocity when we reach the target of 20 meters per second. So we will have it. And with... Maybe we'll say 50 meters per second to spare, so we could have gone down to 300 meters per second, but we have to watch out for that. So our little fuel transfer vehicle, because this isn't topped off, won't be getting all of it from here, but we have some fuel left over on the station, so we can take some of that back. Oh gosh, what if we don't have enough? 
And I think I'm gonna have to use main force to try and get this, given how much mod propellant we have left. We might want an engineer just to attach some more monoprop tanks to it. We are at the mercy of magnetism, I think. Please let magnetism be good to me. <laughs> It's rare that I would rely on magnetism this much, but it's got to happen. We, we're down to one mod propellant. Um, come on. Okay. Well, there we go. But yeah, that was unpleasant. So, we have ore, and we have some fuel left in this. First, I'll transfer what we've got into there. And then we'll just convert to liquid fuel first so that the nuke has enough. Okay, that's probably more of just pure liquid fuel than we need. And lest we forget, monoprop. Okay, we are done converting the ore. Okay, it would seem like we've got all the things, so... Now, well, I wonder if this mod prop on the fuel transfer vehicle is going to be enough. Yeah. But uh, let's get it into low carbon, well, somewhat higher carbon orbit so that a potential space plane can rendezvous with it. But it's got its fuel. So those are locked. And the total delta V that we have is 1668. At the moment, we will need about, let's say, 300 to get back to Kerbin high orbit, then another 900 to get into low orbit. That is just a safe estimate. So, 1200, and then that'll leave us with 600, uh, sorry, 468 to then come back. But of course, by that time, we will have offloaded the locked propellants. So it'll be safe, it should be doable. Okay, we've backed away from the station a bit. Let's try and get back to Kerbin orbit. So that we can await the arrival of a space plane. Unfortunately, uh, that's a very inclined Kerbin orbit, and we're not going to want that. I think I'll just correct it as part of this burn. Which way around are we going to? That's the question. Perhaps we should target that. Okay, we're going the right direction. Assuming that station ship is also going the right direction. So this should be good. This looks good, equatorial and everything. All right. We are not bumping into our station burn. Again, it's not the most inspiring design ever. But hopefully it'll be somewhat functional. I think the fuel that we have here is enough to top off the space plane. The spirit of Jin. But now we have to get that to work properly. Probably we'll want to send one of these over to Jewel as well. Now the trick here is that the next burn is going to be long. We've got a nearly 20 minute burn time. We're not going to use all of it, but still, we're going to use a fair chunk and it's going to take a while. And we're not spending a whole lot of time in at the low orbit area, right? Because we're coming in very fast and the amount of time we spend near our periapsis is not long. So, but I'd rather not make more than one pass or something like that, but... Yeah, timing it is going to be annoying. I should make a maneuver node. Well, I guess it's not that bad. I was worried that we'd have to start to burn really, really high up. This isn't too bad. I mean, 500 kilometers is still pretty high up, but... Eh, it could be worse. I think I should just go retrograde. But that pulls our periapsis down too much. Alright, I'll follow the node. Okay, well, we've been running the engine for long enough that our one radiator is getting a bit overheated. 
I think I'll leave it there for now and then we'll have this manage most of the rendezvous. It's got, I think, uh, plenty of spare Delta V given the fact that we're going to empty it out and then we just need about 1,200 to get back to Minmus and dock with the station there. So this is in a good place, but before I do anything else, let's take a look at the Jewel situation. We've taken some time now. Jewel has, uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. I should never have time warped to the Jewel encounter. We are definitely not in position for Jewel anymore. So I'll think about that. Maybe I'll still, we'll still do the plan and we'll just time warp to the next Jewel window. And yeah, I'll get your thoughts about the space plane and work on that. Next time might involve space plane testing of various designs. Maybe not just the Spirit of Jin. Uh, I'll think about other possibilities. But I'm in a space plane -y mood, so we'll do a space plane. And yeah, so you guys can tell me what you think about that. And we, whatever space plane we decide to send to Jewel, it'll be topped off with this. So whatever space plane, it'll need to be able to use this fuel. And hopefully not too much more. All right. Given that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.